Have you ever had a bad experience with wireless internet? <laughs> we all have wireless devices, smartphones, tablets. All the electronic devices we have these days are connected to wireless. We always want to have high-speed data connections for these devices for a cheaper price. It is a very painful and frustrating experience to have a slow internet connection. We just want to click on something and download it quickly. We don't like to wait. Why can't we download a gigabyte in a nanosecond? Well, from an engineer's point of view, it is not an easy task to give you that kind of comfort at your fingertips. In this talk, I'm going to explain to you what prevents the service providers from giving everyone faster wireless services for an affordable price, and how the current research we are doing in telecommunications will break this barrier in wireless speeds and provide you with a faster wireless experience. When an electronic device sends data wirelessly, it has to tune its antenna to a particular range of wireless frequencies, which we call as frequency bands. The width of this frequency band is actually proportional to the data connection speed you get. Just like the width of a highway bridge is proportional to the amount of traffic it can handle. But unfortunately, the range of wireless frequencies that can be used for communications is fixed and it can't be expanded with the growing demand for the service. Why is it fixed? Well, extremely low frequencies require larger antenna size which is not the ideal case for mobile communications. And extremely high frequencies can't go through obstacles. That means you'll have to have a line of sight with the base station antenna tower in order to make a connection. Not many people would actually enjoy that inconvenience, finding a line of sight with a tower to make a connection. And also, there are some health risks involved with high frequency signals. So, there is nothing much we can actually do to increase the usable range of frequencies in communications. That is where the research we are doing in telecommunications comes in. We are struggling to find new techniques to send data wirelessly with the minimal use of frequency bands so that we can serve more people with high-speed wireless services. In the same way, you would try to fit more cars on a highway bridge in the rush hour without widening the bridge or reducing the speed of the traffic flow. How can we do this? First, let's have a look at how cellular networks work. The term cell phone. The term cell phone comes from the cellular nature of the network coverage. A geographical area is divided into cells. Usually these cells are a few square kilometers in size and each cell is assigned a separate frequency band so that your mobile device can recognize which cell it is located in and also which base station antenna tower it should talk to. Each cell has an upper limit to the total wireless capacity it can serve within that area because it's been assigned a fixed frequency band. In order to increase your connection speed, we can take two approaches. A, the easy solution. If we can actually reduce the geographical area size of a cell, then we can reduce the number of people within one cell, so that this total cell capacity will be shared among fewer people, thereby increase your connection speed. B, if we can actually increase the total cell capacity, by efficiently using these limited frequencies, then we can increase your connection speed. Usually, easy solutions come with a higher price. If we were to reduce the geographical area size of a cell, then we'll have to deploy base station antenna towers everywhere. This costs us a lot of money for infrastructure. We are actually doing this to some extent in urban busy areas, but if we were to cover a larger land area, 
Like for example, here in Canada, we have a huge land area that needs to be covered. Having a smaller cell size is not always the best option. Let's look at option B. Can we actually use these frequencies more efficiently? When we observe the usage patterns of these wireless frequencies in wireless services, we discover a surprising fact. That is, even though there is a scarcity in these wireless frequency bands, actually these wireless frequencies are heavily underutilized. Why? The reason for this is the way these frequencies are being allocated to different companies. Let me explain this to you using the same traffic analogy. Imagine a traffic plan on a highway bridge where cars are allocated to each lane based on the make of your car. The first lane is only for Japanese-made cars. And the second lane is only for American-made cars. And the third lane is only for German cars. Now, you don't have to be an expert in traffic analysis to tell me that this traffic plan is not the best idea in the world. In fact, this kind of traffic plan can worsen your traffic situation. But unfortunately, this is exactly how these frequency bands are allocated in telecommunications. Different companies have paid huge amount of money in licensing fees and reserved chunks of frequency bands for their use only. Only the subscribers under these companies can use these frequencies for wireless services. No one else can use it. Just like we all want to drive home quickly, regardless of what car model we drive, we all want to have high-speed wireless services, regardless of who licensed these frequencies. But telecommunications is a heavily regulated industry. You can't use other people's property without their consent. That's why we are trying to get the consent of these license users and do the following. Whenever these license users are not using the wireless service, we allow other people to use their frequencies. And every time they want to use their service, we give way to them and give them the priority. In that way, we won't be interrupting them at all. But we will be increasing the wireless frequency band utilization significantly and increase the overall cellular network capacity. To do this, we need to sense when these license users are using the service. To do sensing, we need sensors. We need sensors geographically distributed location. We need geographically distributed sensors with some computer processing power. Where can we find this kind of geographically distributed computers with wireless access? Well, it is in your pocket. That smartphone in your pocket has more processing power than the computers used in the rocket that sent a man to the moon. What are we doing with this tremendous amount of processing power that we carry in our pocket everywhere we go? Well, we play angry birds, <laughs> flappy birds, and take pictures of our food and post on social media and watch cat videos on YouTube. And occasionally we make phone calls too. But still, there is a lot of processing power left that we don't use all the time. What if we can ask these smartphones to use their little bit of their processing power and sense when these license users are using the service and report to a central location and build a cognitive wireless network so that we can serve more people with high-speed wireless services. Speaking of traffic, we do another thing to increase the traffic problem. Carpooling. Instead of driving 20 cars to downtown, we can pack 20 people into a bus and drive to downtown. We do the same thing in telecommunications. 
We use special mathematical coding techniques to pack these data messages going through wireless medium and reduce the number of frequency bands required for the communication. If you look at this whole technology, this would be like coordinating the drivers in the Russia and encourage carpooling so that everyone made it home on time without bottlenecking. So how this technology will benefit you? With this technology, we are going into a new paradigm in telecommunications that will break a barrier in wireless speeds and provide you with a faster, smoother, and happier wireless experience. Thank you.